Greetings, viewers and listeners. Welcome to part two of our interaction with Professor Nathaniel Owusu-Bwedi. I hope you enjoy us. Any challenges? particularly with the, the positions you've, you've occupied, maybe discrimination because of age, because of nationality or anything of the sort? So for nationality, uh, I would say no. Even when I was in the UK where I thought there could be racism, I did not feel racism at all in the university that I was in. However, uh, people tend to look at you before they know who you are. Probably because my face looks young, and uh, even you, you know young. people, people <laughs> my age, people my age, some people my age look, look, look <laughs> quite old with big pot bellies and then grey hair here and then the rest. If some people see my mates and they look at me, it looks like I am growing younger by the day. And so you you mentioned that you are this before people acknowledge you uh -huh. that that has been the, the challenge but with work i don't think anyone has looked down upon my work because i was uh, younger than them or that sort i remember when i was made chairman of the summer school the night summer school i think many people did not know me and so at my first meeting when we were going all the members just passed me by <laughs> and they went their way because they were going to a very important meeting later they realized that i was going to chair the meeting but with time they they they, they liked me and then they went well with me all right that's good to know so um how have you handled it let me just follow you up on that in cases where you are mistaken for someone else and then later people get to know how is the feeling how have you handled it? Well, I think the feeling is good. I always smile. Like I always that. smile. I got you. <laughs> yeah, you know, because they don't, they don't expect. I remember recently I went somewhere and I was introduced as professor. And then everyone turned and looked at me. And then they turned back. So along the line, one approached me and said, in the past, if you say professor, you should see someone with gray hair here, left, right, center. But you, you are too young. The investing is changing. <laughs> and I told him the investing wasn't changing. And so the people who are changing yes. <laughs> the personal, the staff. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's not given on a silver platter. Yeah. I think it's even harder these days. Mm. Have you received any awards along your journey that you'd like to make mention of? Uh, apart from a few grants, grant awards, uh, uh, which come to mind, I haven't received any academic award, as in uh, academic award of excellence, or maybe the best paper or something, I don't know. But with grants, yes, I've received a few grant awards. All right, Prof, which incidents would you consider your happiest? It could be more if you have more happy moments. To well, I, I can say that every time I am promoted, I get excited. But my happiest moment, if you care to know, is when I sat in the plane for the first time. Okay. And, uh, Manchester. Oh. Yes, I was going to Manchester. <laughs> and uh, the, the whole reason why that, be, that is my happiest is the way I got my visa and then I had to go. You know, uh, when we were students, I tried a number of times to go abroad and did not work out. And here I was. Uh, given all the treatment, the premier treatment that I could think about, we went to the British Council, not to the High Commission, the British Council. I was put in a pajero to uh, the visa section. I did not join any queue. You no, know, there was, I was like being ushered in through all the processes. I just did my fingerprints, came, and then they brought my passport to me. <laughs> On a, on a fully paid trip. So I really enjoyed that trip in 2010, thereabouts, yes. And you were 
Oh, everything was painful. <laughs> that that in that that is. We were ordering stuff. Oh, on you see on the on the flight it was it was like that was my first time, so I had to look at what others were doing, <laughs> and uh, I did some just that uh, I did not enjoy all the food because I hadn't developed taste for that. Food. <laughs> but subsequently, I think I any time I traveled, I I took a lot. That's on the lighter side. Yes. <laughs> so with all these accomplishments, what are your plans going forward? So like I said, uh, I, I think that, ten years to there, the is, there is work <laughs> ahead, a lot of work ahead. And it has started by, you know, when you are recognized by other institutions, then they keep pouring work on you. Uh, every, almost every time I have one form of assessment or promotion document that I have to do or the other. And then looking at my research, I think that I need to really take off. Uh, in the past, I have mixed environmental chemistry, which used to be my first love with uh, inorganic chemistry. But I think that it was because the instrumentation for the inorganic was almost non-existent. But this time, that is going to be my, my focus. So focus is going to be on research. It's going to be in the area of materials and inorganic chemistry. I hope that I achieve a lot in that area. All right, any dreams for leadership? Well, I, w I would say that one step at a time, I'll take it as it comes. I think I'm well prepared for positions that will come in future because of uh, the exposure that I have had, uh, both on campus and outside campus. I have chaired a few committees here and there, and I keep chairing. And so I get to know people, how they uh, approach things, the, their behavior and all that. And so I think that if any, any future positions come, I will embrace them. All right. Rob, well, what would be your advice to your younger self, your 15 year old self, for example? You can choose any age and give an advice that you wish you had received if you were, or when you were that age. Well, uh, Paul said that when he was young, he thought like a child and then uh, he behaved like a child. But when he grew up, he put away childish things. There are so many things that we do in our young age, which is normal. It is normal because you cannot expect a child to behave like an adult. You know, 15 is a teenage age. I have a 15 year old son, and sometimes when I look at him and the kind of behavior that he puts up, uh, I just laugh, and sometimes I become so serious because if I don't straighten him up, I don't know what will become of him. <laughs> I think that. But I think it's a perfect question for you. So, yes. what advice do you give him <laughs> that you wish he would take, <laughs> probably? So, uh, recently when he was going to the secondary school, he's at Uruguay. I told him that he should be careful of uh, the kind of friends that he makes because at that point there's a lot of peer pressure, which sometimes makes you feel like you are inadequate, and so you want to impress them and most of the time it ends up in certain things that you wouldn't want to end yourself in and so he should be careful he, he should know that he went there to study and that should be his prime focus if he comes out of the university or comes out of the secondary school and gets to the university then he's mature enough to do a lot of other things that he can't do now so he should focus on his studies and also join uh, the CACSU, the Catholic uh, yes. Students Union, so that the spiritual formation will also uh, continue. So uh, that, that is the kind of advice I would give to myself at that point. And uh, I think hard work, there's nothing that is, uh, can replace hard work. It doesn't kill. <laughs> no, 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 no. All right. Any regrets that you want to share with the public? <laughs> Well, uh, I would say in that... In you wish you would have done differently along the way? So far as my academic career progression has been concerned, I don't have any regrets. If I have any regrets, then probably uh, 
maybe now it is not even a regret, but when I, I didn't get pharmacy, uh, I thought that I had failed. Uh, yes, <laughs> but now it turns out to be a blessing in disguise. So I, I, I don't think I have any regrets. Uh, any hobbies? Uh, they say scientists are bookworms. Do you have any hobbies? Do you defy that generalization? I do. I I don't know if it's a hobby, but I like chatting with friends. I, I don't I, I don't <laughs> I don't see that as a, a clear hobby. I don't know. Okay. But apart from that, so I like to read conversations. Yes. I like to read motivational, watch motivational and inspirational, watch about leadership. Every time you see me watching a YouTube movie, it's about how to repair my car, <laughs> how to be a successful person, or how to make money. Okay. Three things. It's, it's, it's always, it has always been uh, things that move me. I don't like normal movies, but anything that talks about motivation, that, that talks about uh, starting a business, you know, I am just moved by it, even though it doesn't always make me start a business. I think that it motivates me well enough. So that, that Do you is, think that passion probably comes from interaction with the Foundation for Future Leaders early on? I, I think so. I think so. And I think that it's something that has been inherent even before because that moved me towards the uh, Foundation for Future Leaders. I, I don't know if personally I have any leadership traits, but I find myself leading anywhere I go. People just select me. Even though I'm that calm person and unassuming, uh, I tend to get that favor. I don't know whether it is through training or listening or things that I do, but I think that uh, Foundation of Media Leaders also train me well because I work with them after school. I have to work as the national coordinator uh, of the Future Leaders Group. And I learned a, a lot of things from uh, Mr. Emmanuel Day to me, who was my immediate boss. You made mention of repairing cars. Do you still repair your car, your own car? I do. <laughs> okay. I do. So I do. I, I last time you did. So, uh, just yesterday, yesterday I had to do some electrical repair on one of my cars. The one I'm using today. Uh, that's why I'm using it anyway, because otherwise I would have used a different car. So, I'm testing it. And I, I enjoy doing those things. You know, sometimes you go to a mechanic shop and you do, they, they, they do trial or Yeah, they error. don't seem to know what they are about. And then they get it, and then you have to pay for it. When everything is on YouTube, you they know. You can actually even destroy something in the process. Yes. So <laughs> what I've been doing lately is to look at the part, order from China, oh. fix it. You've yes. advanced to that level. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. And Recently, you have all the tools to I have virtually somewhere. every tool that I need. Virtually every tool. I invest in tools. I, if it's very mechanical and needs strength, mm -hmm. then I'll take it to the mechanic. But I'll tell the mechanic the things that I want him to do. And sometimes it helps them a lot because you have information. And you also get your money reduced because they know you know what you are doing. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But when it comes to electrical works and those things, I try my best to do them. Mm. Right. Recently, I, I had a, a problem with my air conditioner. And then they told me that I should buy a whole compressor. Mm. But I, I read and saw that it was only a valve that I had to replace. But they couldn't get the valve here. Mm. So I got a part, ordered it. And then took it to the air conditioning guy. He was able to replace it. The whole thing worked. It was happy though. Because he hadn't seen the valve alone being yeah. sold like that. But That's why he asked for the entire company. Yes. Well, Which would have cost me 2000 So would have cost me 2000 for the compressor. But I spent $10. Less than $10 on, on the valve. Less than 100 Yeah. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> I think that uh, sometimes when you know these things, it helps. That's a good hobby, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and something worth emulating by every younger person listening to you. Any parting words? So, I'll, I'll first of all want to thank you for bringing me on this great show. Uh, like I said in the beginning, if you come here, then it means that you have achieved something. 
Did you know uh, this? So <laughs> you, there's something we have to tell the yes, people about. And, uh, I think that uh, I would share this if I get the opportunity to a uh, various platform so that people watch your channel because there are so many wonderful things happening there. I saw the interview with the Jack Onimo, which is uh, legendary. You know, Jack Onimo and various others. I also saw that of Professor Mikisi and uh, so many others. I think that the people should watch your channel. And, uh, thank you for the good job that you are doing. I would also urge those watching me that uh, especially those in academia who want to be like me, that it doesn't take a day. I have achieved this within 15 years of work and uh, not 15 years of sleeping, 15 years of, of, of hard work. Uh, if uh, you need to write papers and then you write them thinking that you have written them well, <laughs> you send them to publishing houses and they throw it back at you. Sometimes you, after one year, you, you don't know whether to and continue. They it's not good enough. <laughs> you don't know whether to continue <laughs> or to give up. But all you know, uh, that that has toughened us up to get to where we are. So we are not going to relent. We are going to continue. That is what I also leave with all viewers that they shouldn't relent on anything that they set out to do. They should make sure that they continue until they achieve. All right. Thank you very much for Thank for you. coming. Hello viewers and listeners, this is how we end our conversation with Professor Nathaniel Usubwebi. I'm sure you have learned a lot. See you next time. Bye-bye for now.